I'm in Affinity Photo, and I have two circular selections here. Now, you probably know how selections work. We can paint inside the selection, but not outside the selection. So let's test that theory. I have the selection on the left, and I'll just paint inside with my brush. And you can see I can't cross the line. Let's try this one on the right. I'll paint inside. And you notice something different is happening. I'm actually able to paint outside of it. It's supposed to be impossible to paint outside of a selection. So what's happening here? Well, turns out selections may not be as clean cut as they appear. We tend to think of the bounds of a selection as representing an inside versus an outside. But actually, those boundaries represent a transparency threshold. Let's look at selections and masks to clearly see how this works. I have this image here of a landscape. Let me add a mask to it. So I'll click mask down here, mask layer. I'll invert the mask so it's all black. So I'll select layer, invert. And because the mask is all black, it hides my whole image. I'm just looking at the mask now. On my mask, I'll paint a sharp white circle. So I'll click this. It's just a hard round paintbrush. And if I look at my image again, you can see that's just showing that area. Now, one property of a mask is that you can control click on the mask layer and it'll make a selection from your mask. So with my mask selected, I'll control click on it. And now I have a selection here. So let me add a new pixel layer. I'll select my paintbrush again. And you can see I can only paint inside that selection. So, so far, nothing too surprising. Let's do that again, but now let's add a mask with a soft boundary. So I'll add a mask. I'll call it soft mask. I'll invert it. So let's add a soft circle now. I'll use the radial gradient tool. I'll make this radial. So now our mask has a pretty soft edge. So now the question is, if I control click on the mask, what is selected? Well, let's try it. I'll control click on the mask. And you can see it selected this part here. And the reason it's selected there is because that's where the middle gray level is. When we make a selection with a mask, the selection is trying to differentiate between the lower values, those below 128, and the upper values, those above 128. Now if I go back to my image, let's turn off the mask. I'll add another pixel layer. And now you can see when I paint, I'm actually getting this faded effect. And this is because selections themselves have alpha values. So see the mask is having no effect, it's just the selection. Let's make a really chaotic mask to show the point. I added a new mask here. Let's alt click on it. Now let's add all types of gray. Some black here, some of this. Let's just make a mess. I'll use the smudge brush tool. Let's push it around. So this is what my mask looks like now. So I'll control click on it. And you can see the selection it made. It seems like it's these solid areas. Let's go back and do our experiment again. I'll turn off the mask. Let's add a pixel layer. And if I paint onto it, you can see it's painting almost everywhere. This open area here is actually the main selection but I can actually paint inside this area too. So selections have alpha values and the bounds of the selection represent 50% transparency. When you use the standard marquee tools, it just creates a black and white mask. So let's select the rectangle here. I'll make a shape here. So with this selection here, I can only paint on the inside. And the reason that happens is if I make a mask from this selection, if I go to layer, new mask layer, this is what the selection is actually doing. But if I go and blur this, let's use our smudge brush tool like that. Now if I control click on this mask, and if I go and create a pixel layer again, and if I go paint on it now, you can see the right side has transparency, but the left side is still pretty solid. And that's a result of what our mask looks like. Now does any of this actually matter? Well, it affects the behavior of several selection tools in Affinity Photo. One example would be the refine tool. So first I'll use the selection brush here, and then I'll select some of these trees on the horizon. So I'll select these trees. Now let's click the refine button. So I'll click refine here and I'll refine this edge. Now I'll output a selection. So I'll click apply. Let's make a new pixel layer. Now if we zoom in, you may think this selection is very harsh, just solid inside and outside. But if I actually use a brush, if I paint over it, you can see some of the paint is going slightly outside of the selection, this yellow area there. And again, this is because a selection has a alpha value to it. Many of the other tools that select based on brightness and colors have a similar effect. For example, I can choose select, select from layer intensity. And you may think that if you make changes, it will only be affected to the selected area. But once again, if I choose a paintbrush, I can paint clear across selection boundaries. Something similar happens with select, select sampled color. So I'll select the trees here on the horizon again. And if I zoom in, you might think I'm just selecting this interior area, but if I paint, it's actually going outside the lines a little bit. You can see the blue is spilling out there. Did you know that this was how selections behaved? Let me know down in the comments below.
Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.